a home um, in the near future. Look into this information. And if you have just moved into an apartment somewhere, it's a perfect time to start this because we know that you're going to be there for the next 12 months. At least you'll be there for the next 12 months, maybe even 18, maybe 24 months and get this started today. Again, there is a fee associated with it. I don't know exactly how much the fee is. It's probably different from for different companies. Can't imagine that it's too much, but it may be well worth it um, for you. So get into that. All my renters, please get into that. So let me throw a shout out out here real quick. So I want to have a birthday um, shout out. So I got a shout out Juanita Brown. She celebrated a birthday earlier this week. Um, also, Yolanda Taylor used to be formerly Yolanda Carter. She celebrated a birthday earlier this week as well. And then I've got to shout out Anthony Bodie as well. He celebrated a birthday and he is going to be a daddy um, coming up real soon. Like in the next couple of weeks, baby is due. Uh, bouncing baby boy. So uh, happy birthday and congratulations to you, Anthony, as well. All right. So it's the halfway point of the show. I told you all already that, you know, we're going to do this question of the day, of course. So now let's get into the question of the day. And it is sponsored by none other than Cute as a Cupcake, Cupcakery and Bake Shop, which is located in Merrillville, Indiana, 2008 West 81st in Merrillville, Indiana. But the cupcakes are more than just cute. They're delicious. Cute as a Cupcake. You guys get by Cute as a Cupcake. If you're in the Northwest Indiana area, I'm telling you, they're delicious. I was stop, I stopped in um, last week, and uh, I was able to get my favorite, which is the uh, cupcake in the jar, um, red velvet, and it was absolutely delicious. Next time I'm in Indiana, I'm going to get me another um, cupcake over at Cute as a Cupcake. All right, so let's get into the question of the day. So the question comes from Charles. Charles is from Parts Unknown, because I just don't know where Charles is from. And uh, so uh, he actually inboxed me um, on um, Facebook. And uh, so here's his question. He says, afternoon, Mr. King. I had a question for you. I've, ha- I've heard that if you dispute with Experian, then Equifax and TransUnion normally delete it from your credit report too. Um, how true could that be? Well, again, thank you very much, Charles. I appreciate you. Um, sending me this question and we had a little back and forth dialogue. And so if I get your question correctly, you're basically, you're saying, you were saying two things. One thing that I think you were saying is like, if you use Experian as your um, guide, if you will, to see if somebody will remove something from your credit report, then most likely the other two credit reporting agencies will also remove that from your credit report. This may be true. And the, and the reason this would be true and you, and I wouldn't say that using Experian is the, you know, the litmus test. That's not the one that you necessarily should, should use. Um, and I'm not saying you should use the other ones either as your litmus test. But the information should be the same. So when you file a dispute with any of the three credit bureaus, they're going to go to the company and say, this person says this is incorrect or it shouldn't be on their credit bureau. And so you need to provide us, meaning TransUnion or Equifax or Experian, information saying yes it is or no it is not theirs. And then um, they'll make a determination and they will remove it or uh, keep it on your credit report. So that's what happens. That information should be the same no matter if you contact TransUnion first, Equifax or Experian. That information should be absolutely the same. But then also if you're um, asking uh, if you're asking as well that if you um, if you go ahead and uh, go to Experian and you file a dispute with Experian, that then eventually TransUnion and Equifax will also pick up that same dispute and they'll remove that from your credit report or you'll have the same result. And that's not the case. So first, if you're going to go ahead and file a dispute and it's on a particular item and it's listed on all three of your credit reports, You've got to file individual disputes with each of the three credit bureaus. So TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, they all need to get a letter from you or however you're going to file it. Um, If you file it electronically, because of course you can go to their their websites and you can file it electronically. So that's what you need to do. You're going to have to file it with each one of the three individually to have it removed or to have it investigated um, on your credit report. So definitely you have to do that. And then again, 
I don't know about Experian being the litmus test for you. Um, if you say, hey, if I use um, them and they come back and say, yes, it's coming off my credit report, then the other two will follow as well. That All that information should be the same coming back from the collector. So if you got a collection agency that's collecting on you and, you know, you um, dispute something through Experian first and then they come back and give some information, then you go in and um, dispute something, that same item with TransUnion, then they should come back saying the same exact information. And if they don't, then that's an issue um, for the credit reporting agencies to look into because that's not correct. That's not the way it should be done. All right. So, again, thank you so, so very much. Uh, Anthony, uh, Anthony, thank you so very much, Charles. I appreciate it. Um, from parts unknown, since I don't know where Charles is from, um, let's just pick a place. So, Charles from Barbados. So, Charles from Barbados, thank you so very much for contacting me on the 800 Credit Score Man Show. You are a officially a part of the 800 Credit Score Man Show family. Again, thank you, everybody out there. If you've got questions, contact me anyway possible contact me again instagram is at 800 credit score man um contact me on facebook at 800 credit score man is a fan page of mine um you can also uh hit me at email 800 credit score man at gmail.com so you can do all those things and of course i'm on twitter um it's at credit score underscore man because that 800 thing was too long for them so at credit score underscore man on twitter if you follow me on twitter i will absolutely follow you back i will absolutely follow you back if you follow me on twitter so um get there and let's engage and you can become part of the 800 credit score man family as well like charles i will not give up all of your information you ask me a question i'll simply answer that question on the air using your first name and where you're from so if you do contact me please put where you're from as well all right so let's jump into the second portion um of the show and actually before i get there i want to to uh i want to give some other information about this whole rental thing as well so if you want to look up additional information about this and you can find several um companies that will do this um, toward the end if we keep scrolling and reading I want you to go to Experian. Yes, that's the credit bureau. Experian.com forward slash build credit history. That's Experian.com forward slash build credit history. If you go there, you will get additional information regarding um, placing rental on your credit bureau. So it can help you out. So, all right. So let's let's do that, folks. Go to Experian.com forward slash build build credit history all right so then let's jump into the second portion of the show i wanted to talk to you guys about um a dialogue that i had with someone so i was in um a chat you know having a credit dialogue with somebody and uh you know people started chiming in and this one individual happened to chime in saying that um he no longer needs credit credit is not uh, a issue for him at all he doesn't need it um, his home will be paid off in the next six months. Um, his car is already paid off and he just simply doesn't feel that he needs credit. Uh, so we went back and forth. One, I asked him, one thing I asked him was, so what's your current credit score of which he never answered. Now that gives me two things. One, if your credit score was high and good and excellent, you know, if you had an 810 credit score, He'd be thumping his chest about how good his credit score is. So that's one clue. And then secondly, you know, maybe it is low and it was too low. But you know what? We've all been there. We've all been there. So there's no need to be ashamed if you have a 485 credit score. There's no need to be ashamed of that. I have people contact me all the time knowing that I, re I restore credit and they contact me all the time. And it takes them two days and 19 emails to finally say, what their credit score actually is. And if, like I said, everybody's been there. So, and your credit score probably can't be any worse than I've ever seen. So there's no need for you to be embarrassed about your credit score. Cause so many people are in that same boat. If the average credit score in America right now is around 673, that means there's a lot of people above it. And there's a whole lot of people below it. So you are not alone. Don't worry about it. And don't be ashamed of what your credit score is, especially since you're listening to the 800 Credit Score Man show and you are working on your credit right now. Be proud of that. All right. So look, so we're having this little dialogue and he says he doesn't need 
credit anymore. So we were going back and forth and um, I wanted to make sure that he knew that there are reasons you should have credit. So if you're a person that thinks I don't need credit anymore at all, you know, I got cash and I can pay everything in cash and there's no problem at all. Let me just give you a few reasons why you might need credit. So in this particular person's case, since his car is already paid off. So I guess he believes this is the last car he's ever going to buy. It's going to last forever. I don't know what kind of car he has, but it's just absolutely going to last forever because it's the best car on the planet. Um, there is a thing called accidents. What if you have an accident in that car and it's totaled and now you need a new car, but you decided to let your credit go and you don't need credit anymore at all. Now, what are you going to do? Because his point was that his car was paid off. So not, he didn't say I got, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars in the bank. He said, my car is paid off. So if you have an accident and you need to get a new car, you're going to have to finance that car if you're going to get something um, that's worthy of financing. You know, if you're getting something and you don't have ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 to drop on a little car, and, you know, maybe you want a Mercedes, and you don't have seventy five, eighty five thousand dollars $85,000 to spend on a brand new Mercedes, then you're going to have to finance it. So that's one point I wanted to make about that. Second, let's talk about utilities. Now, not everywhere, not everywhere, but definitely in the state, and I don't know where this guy's from, but definitely in the state of Texas and several other states, the utilities are now, your utilities, when I say utilities, I mean you live in a home or you live in an apartment and, you know, your lights and your gas are deregulated, which means your place that you've always had that, you know, sent you your electric bill and sent you your light bill, all those things, now they have competition. And they have competition because it's deregulated and several people uh, or several, several companies can uh, go in and actually bid with you. Basically, almost like cable, they can bid with you uh, for you to come on board and let them provide your electricity and whatnot. So in Texas, for example, um, it's deregulated. And so if you were to find a better deal or you want to switch because you didn't like the old place or what have you, then you would have to pay a deposit. Your deposit will depend on your credit score. So now you've got to pay a deposit. Maybe it's only $200. Maybe it's $100. Maybe it's $2,500. I don't know. But if you have a bad credit score, then you're going to have to pay a bigger deposit than your neighbor next door who has a 827 credit score. You're going to have to pay a bigger deposit than that person. And and I would venture to say, if you've got an 827, you shouldn't have to pay a deposit at all. So that's another reason that this person may need credit. Another reason, if you get a cell phone, if this guy wants to change from one carrier to the other carrier, then your credit is run and they decide if and how much your deposit should be based on your credit score in part. So back in the day, they only used to pull your credit report just to see if you had an issue with another, um, if you had an issue with another carrier. But now they're pulling it and they're looking at that score. And within that score, they have their own range. Okay, this person has, you know, a 600 credit score, so they got to pay 150 dollars. This person has a 500 credit score, so now they got to pay 250 um, as a deposit. This person has an 800 score. Hey, get them a phone and try to sell them something else. So that's what happens as well. So on your cell phone. So these are all reasons that you do need your credit and ways that you can save money. Um, because if you have a better credit score, that car that you got to buy, that interest rate is going to be a lot lower. The utility deposit you might have to put down. Maybe you don't have to put it down or you have to put it down um, less money. Same thing with the cell phone deposit as well. And so this last one I want to mention to you, because a lot of people don't realize this is insurance, your auto insurance as well. So you got auto insurance. Not only do they look at your driving record, what kind of car you have, the area that you live in, how far you drive, but they also pull a credit report on you as well. So if you have a good credit score, then your premium is a little lower. And I can't say if it's $25 lower, $2 lower or $100 lower, but that does happen. And I and and then I was actually having another conversation with a young lady who suggested or she believes that when she had a lower credit score, it was in the 500s and she improved her credit score to the 700s. I want to say she said she had a 720. Her car insurance after she called them, 
and all the people that are listening to me and you are working on your credit and you're improving it all the time, when you get that good credit score,